I want to show you my year-long seventh grade bundle. Now that we are getting ready to go back to school, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to show you how this year-long bundle would be perfect for your classroom. Now, in my year-long bundle, I have an interactive notebook. This comes as a PDF. I just went and printed it so that I have little booklets. And you also get year-long homework. The year-long homework is aligned perfectly to the notebook. You also will be receiving foldables and also assessments, pre-tests, post-tests, vocabulary quizzes, and as well, activities. I have year-long activities as well. Okay, so I first want to show you the interactive notebook. I absolutely love the interactive notebook. It is very organized. You will have other teachers um, that will ask you about the notebooks. You will have parents that are loving how organized their students, their, their child is, okay? So there is six booklets, five units, but six if you include unit zero. And unit zero is the notebook starter. So it's just everything you need to get your notebooks started. Uh, unit one, number sense. Unit two, ratios and proportional relationships. Unit three, expressions and equations. Unit four, geometry. And unit five, statistics and probability. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you unit zero first. So in unit zero, like I stated earlier, it's the notebook starter. I have some, just a short teacher notes for you. Um, I have a table of contents that goes over what's included for the unit. There is a cover page for students. It says my seventh grade math interactive notebook. This is something that you can give students the first day of school and they can um, fill it out. Color, looks wonderful. Classroom rules your math notebook expectations, your reasons for those expectations. Students will sign it and date it. Grading rubric. I absolutely love the grading rubric. I have broken it down by first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter so that students are scored, uh, graded each quarter. I love this because it informs students of what they're doing well or what they need to improve on. So you'll see I broke it down by organization and parents. You can decide how many points you want to give for that, completeness, how many points you want to give for that, and determine their score. There's a spot for teacher comments. So you can write in there, excellent notebook, excellent work, so on. or needs to improve with your reflections, needs more thought, things like that. Um, and it gives really, really nice feedback to the students so that they know what they need to improve so that they can get a better score, okay? Math reference sheet, table of contents. You can print multiple of these, have students staple it, and so they can flip it up and down. Reflection. Now, the thing about the reflection is you can use this actually as many times as you want throughout the notebook. I get asked by teachers, well, when should I use it and how often? Honestly, you should use it any time that you feel that you want students to reflect upon what they learned. I love using it when it has something that's very visual where students can draw a picture and give me an example and write a really nice reflection as well. Um, so I use this actually quite a bit throughout the year. Goals, very important for students to set goals. I go by first, second, third, and fourth quarter. So I will give this to students, they will fill it out. Then after the quarter's over, I will give them a look back. They will look back, see if they achieved their goals and then they will write, uh, did I accomplish my goals? Why or why not? What are some techniques that I can use to become a better goal setter? Very important, okay? So you get all this is unit zero to start your notebook. 
Now, the fun stuff. Get into that notebook. I printed the answer key, but um, you do get a blank template that includes just the questions and then students will fill out the information. And I like to put the answer key on the board or go or put the blank template up on the board on the projector and go by it um, question by question. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and show you. This is the table of contents. It tells you what page number. So when you have the PDF, it makes it easy for you know to know which page you need to print. This is what the unit includes. Now, unit one overview. Love the overview. Overview is wonderful to have because it notifies students in advance of what they're going to be learning, the concepts in the unit. It also tells them some essential questions, vocabulary, what do you need to know, what do you expect it to know, important dates, pre-test, post-test, vocabulary quiz. And again, if you buy this bundle, I include pre-test, post-test, and vocabulary quizzes. And so it makes it super, super easy. It all goes together. Um, what I love about this is that you can have students write in the date of the pretest that will be coming up and the post test and so on and it holds students accountable. Students can't say oh I didn't know we had a test today and say well let's open your interactive notebook let's look and see because we had to write it down in our interactive notebook so it holds students accountable. Scores, students can go back and write what did they get on the pretest, the post test, and the vocabulary quiz. Very organized keeps it all together in one spot. Okay, now, love this. We're actually getting into the material. So you will see I have two pages for each concept. Some of them have three or four pages um, depending upon if they have an activity. Not every single concept has an activity. But it will have the unit up here, so this is number sense, and it will tell you the concept that it's going over. Absolute value. Every single concept has an I can statement. This is the answer key, remember. So students will be filling this in. So the I can statement, there will be some vocab or an essential question or some type of question. Students will be filling all this information in. What I love to do is I love to go over all this information with students. It's very direct instruction, um, notes, things like that go over the examples, and then I have students apply the knowledge that they just learned onto the next page, which is your turn. So students will now go and solve these problems based off of the information that we just went over. What I love to do is, like I said earlier, project on the smart board or the whiteboard the blank template, write it in, information by information as I go and students fill it out, discuss, talk about it, have some class discussions. Then your turn, I make sure to walk down each row, each aisle, and check on my students. This gives me instant feedback as to what students still need help, who understands it, and can move on. So if I have a student that got number one right, I'm walking down the rows, I say, okay, go on to number two, try number three or so on. If they need extra help, I will be there to help them. I also love to project the blank template of your turn on the smart board or the whiteboard and call on students to come up and solve the problems. The main thing is that I want students to have the information correct in their notebook because this is a really good study tool that students can use throughout the entire year before a test. I don't want them to have incorrect information. So that's why we make sure to go over the information as well together. Students will write a reflection. They know they have to write a really good, nice reflection. What I mean by that is we do about two, three sentences. It can't say something like, I learned how to do math. Students know that I am very picky about that. They have to write, what did you actually learn? What did you take away from this lesson? 
So make sure they write a really good reflection. Also, here they get to rate themselves. How well do you understand the concepts? If you don't understand it that well, please circle a one. If you don't understand at all, I mean. If you uh, somewhat got it, there's a three. And then if you really, really understand it and you're like, I got this, I'm ready to move on, a five. This just helps out because if you're studying right before a test and you're going through your notebook and flipping through, you can go back and see which ones you needed more help on. So love that. It's a really good tool for the students. Okay, so I'm going to start going through this quickly because I don't want to wait waste too much time and make it a really long video. Um, you'll see the activity for that one. They, students will cut that out, paste that on the number line. Again, this already has the answer key printed on there. And not every single one will have the um, activity at the end. Love, love adding and subtracting fractions on the number line. We do a lot of that. Adding and subtracting integers using visual representation. Here's the rules. This one comes with a uh, three little foldables. Students will cut and glue. Little activity. Multiplying integers. Some more cutouts. Activity. Dividing integers. There's a little cutout. And your activity. Comparing least common multiple and greatest common factor. Adding and subtracting fractions. Big one. Students love, love these notebooks because it keeps it so well organized, like I said. Easy for them to go back and look through how to do the problems. So how do we multiply fractions? Students will cut that out. Paste that right there. And then divide fractions. Adding and subtracting decimals. Adding and subtracting decimals, I already said, multiplying decimals, dividing decimals. Now, at the end of each unit, there is an activity, a cell phone vocabulary activity. In this activity, students will be cutting out these little cell phone templates. Uh, these are the covers, and they will be given the vocab, and they will either have a matching activity, if you print this one with the answer key, they can have a matching activity, or if you print the blank template, you can have students, if you have devices, iPads, Chromebooks, desktop computers, anything like that, have students research. Turn it into a great activity where students are online researching the vocab, and students will write it in. So it's a great activity. I want to show you that I have actually done it right here. Now, I always get asked by teachers, coloring, hmm, how much time does that take away from your class? Do I have to have students color? Okay, so what I say is no, you do not have to have students color. However, I make it worth points in the grading rubric that students have to color code. Color code is different. If students want a color like this, perfectly fine. I do have quite a few students that love to doodle in color, and they will take their notebooks home and make it very colorful like this. Or I have students that if I have time at the end of the period, they like to just go ahead and color. Um, but this is the cell phone activity. You can see it's all put together. There are three blank ones right here and I have three blank covers but I didn't use them and so that's just if you have extra vocab on top of mine you can use those so that works out well so I'm going to show you an, an example of one of the pages and again this is really colorful because I had lots and lots of time to show you how colorful it could be however students don't have to do it like this what I do with my students if I am out of time and I don't have time for students to color I will have students use highlighters and they will color code so they can go and they can highlight any important information formulas facts examples 
anything that is very important to them, they need to color code. And again, I make that part of the grading rubric so that it pops when they're studying. They can, it draws their attention right away and they can see the important facts. Now, if you want students to color, you have time at the end of class, perfect. I have had teachers ask me, do I color before cutting out or after? I'll be honest with you, it's best to color after because most important is let students get all this information down. Make sure you go through this information. Make sure they get through your turn. If you have time at the end of class, then you can let them go ahead and color. It's a nice way also to let them relax the last few minutes of class instead of having kids, you know, sometimes at the end of the end of the period, students are, you know, tired and restless. And so this will help them um, if you have 10 minutes of class or so on. Okay? Now, we are done with Unit 1. I want to go through real quick Oops. Unit 2. Okay, so in Unit 2, okay, so Unit 2 is on ratios and proportional relationships. Here's the table of contents and there's the checklist. Okay, the overview, like I said earlier, concepts, essential questions, vocabulary, important dates, scores. Here we are into our unit rates, ratios, and proportions and our concept intro to ratios. I will tell you I absolutely love teaching this unit. Students love this unit. I think that this unit is very, very um, real world. Students love how much they get to do markups and markdowns and proportional relationships and looking at the tables and the graphs. And so it's a really, really nice unit to have. Lots of real world examples, graphs, converting between decimals, fractions, and percents. Here's our markdowns, discounts, markups, sales tax, tip, very real world, Commission, percent increase, decrease, simple interest, and then again, cell phone. Okay, so again, I'm going to try to go through these at a quicker pace. Unit 3, expressions and equations. There's my table of contents. Expressions and equations, combining like terms the distributive property, simplifying expressions, solving one-step equations, solving two-step equations with modeling. They're pushing a lot of having students understand why are we solving two-step equations, how do I solve them, without just applying a process, what does it mean? So this breaks it down to where students have to actually draw the equation and then determine their answer. So that works out very well. After that, then we go ahead and we show them the process. Okay, this is how you solve two-step equations. Okay, inequalities. Solving graphing one-step inequalities. Two-step inequalities. Little activity. Cell phone. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Unit 4 is on geometry. So we have table of contents. This is the overview. Constructing triangles. We have an activity. Does it create a triangle? Is it not a triangle? We also have angle relationships. This is the introduction into it. Then we have evaluating angles. We have identifying angle relationships and solving with angle relationships. And then there's some foldables, rectangles, area and perimeter, triangles, area and perimeter, circles, area and circumference, 
similar figures, an activity on similar figures, scale drawings, love scale drawings. That was the one you saw here. So there's your scale drawings. Okay, so you can see here it is, not colored. Again, you can have students color code. There's the your turn. Volume, surface area using nuts, and then the activity. Last one. Students love, love, love. I think statistics and probability is their favorite because they love thinking, what's the probability of flipping a coin or getting a queen and a deck of cards, things like that. Um, I think this comes to them very easily and so they enjoy it. Uh, table of contents and then the checklist. Overview, random sampling, draw inferences. Here's some data. Students are going to be looking at some different data. Mean, median, mode, range. That's a big one. So there's a little foldable for them. Mean absolute deviation, line plots, stem and leaf plot, box and whisker plot. Probability of an event, probabi probability of a repeated event, probability of independent and dependent events, and likelihood. And then again, cell phone template. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to now show you, since you've seen the interactive notebook, I want to show you the homework that is perfectly aligned to the notebook. So, with the homework, you will be given a year-long homework that goes perfectly, like I said, with the notebook, where each concept will have two pages. There are eight problems total, and I will show you those. I first want to show you at the top left, there is a due date. I absolutely love this. Have students circle when is it due. For example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. I circle Tuesday on here. So I know that my homework is due Tuesday. So as soon as you give students the homework, have them circle when it's due. Hold them accountable to that. Now, you will see I have five problems on the first page and then three on the second page. So let me show you how this is perfectly aligned to the notebook. Here is the unit number sense. So I know number sense is from unit one. I will go through here and find adding and subtracting fractions on the number line. Here we are, adding and subtracting fractions on the number line. So on the same day that I give students this interactive notebook page and we go over your turn, I will then give students this for homework and students will have to complete it and turn it in to me. Now, I said the first page has five problems, very, very similar to what they had on here. It's the same. They have to look at a number line. They have to add and subtract fractions. I like to sometimes throw in a word problem. We have been really pushing students, especially uh, well, not only in English class, but in their math class. Students have to be able to justify, explain, write their answers. And so I'm trying to prepare my students to really think, to justify their reasons. And so you'll see I have some word problems in there where students are going to have to write. They're going to have to justify. They'll have to reason and explain. So you'll see some of those problems. Okay. So this is the first page. You can print these back to back. On the second page, I have every single problem number six is going to be find the mistake. I love this because students will be given problems sometimes where they will have to find the mistake. I will have a problem solved. There's something wrong with the problem, something incorrect. So students need to circle the mistake and then they also have to explain why is it wrong. 
Again, lots of explaining, lots of justification. Next problem. Every single homework is going to have students be creative. Write your own word problem and solve below. Really get students thinking. When they have to come up with their own problem, they are going through their thinking process and they will go back and look through other problems and say, how can I connect this to the real world? So I love, love this. I tell students they have to be creative, but yet they have to stick with the concept and especially it needs to be school appropriate. I've never had any issues though because students know how picky I am that they need to make sure that they are responsible and respectful. Okay, number eight, every single one is a reflection. I know you might be thinking, well, we had to write a reflection for the notebook. Yes, but what I'm looking at is this reflection is from newly acquired knowledge. What did they learn when they were in class? And then this reflection is, did you learn something new? Besides what you learned in class, did you go home and find out how to solve these problems a little differently than what you learned in class? And um, I expect students to give me two, three sentences, nice reflection, just like in their notebook. It needs to have a lot of thought, okay? Can't be, from this homework assignment, I learned how to do math. No, it's got to be a really nice reflection, okay? So that's one homework. So you can see, I also have one from, uh, this is unit three, expressions and equations. So let's go to, here's unit three. And this one says solving two step equations. I know that one's right here, okay? So again, same thing. I will go over this. This is more of the direct instruction. They have their cutout. Then your turn. Same day, I will go ahead and I will give them their homework. Five problems. I love that there's also a spot for students to check their answers. Something very important. Not only do I want you to solve, but I want you to check your answer. Okay? And then again, find the mistake. What is wrong with this problem? Explain. Be creative. Write your own word problem and solve it. Give me a nice reflection. You will see your students will become very, uh, they will come very confident in writing and explaining the math. I absolutely love that students are writing so much in my class because they make those connections and that's what you want. Okay. Geometry, scale drawings. So that's from my, let's just show you again, from my notebook, go over all this. Then you'll see very similar. Look at your turn, very similar. Then there's word problems in there. Get students thinking. Also, I have right here where it will have a definition. Students will write in definition. What is a scale drawing? I go over that with my students. On the homework, some of them, problem number one will ask for that definition, but not the definition that you had students write. In your own words, what are scale drawings? Have students think about that. They got to write in their own words. I don't want to see the same, um, the same definition that I gave students. Has to be a different definition. Find the mistake, be creative, and reflection. Okay. And then I have one more. Oh, this one's on unit two. I'll just show you real quick. This one's ratios and proportional relationships. So you have some, you have students have to write, explain. Um, students have to determine if it represents a proportional relationship from a table, from a graph. Explain. Tell me why. Find the mistake. Create your own word problem and solve. And then what did I learn? So again, that is year long homework that you will have. Right now I believe it's uh, it's like 120 pages, and so it will cover you for the entire year and is aligned to the notebook. Last thing I want to show you 
is just an example of one of my Will foldables. You do get not only the notebook and the year-long homework, I stated earlier that you also get assessments, pre-tests, post-tests, vocabulary quizzes, and activities. My activities for the seventh grade is over 200 pages. And then you also have foldables. This is my, I call this Will Foldable because it's in the shape of a circle. And you do not necessarily have to have students glue it in their interactive notebooks. Since you're doing the other interactive notebook, you could have students use it as a handheld study tool. So you wouldn't even need the title, because it has the title right here, and students can just use it to study. If you like it in the notebook, have students glue it in. Okay, just some extra stuff that they can have in their notebook to help them go and study as well. What you'll notice about the Will Foldables is they come with a answer key template where it will already be solved like this and it also comes with a blank template. I like to print the blank template and have my students fill out the information I go over for it says example. I will go over the example with my students and then I will say okay it is your turn. You prove to me, you show me that you understand. And so students will then do your turn. What you could also do if you are running out of time, you have time limit, you could print one layer that already has the answers. So on example, already include the answers. And then on your turn, you can have it blank. And when I say blank, it just it includes the problem. And then students will solve it. That's also a really nice tool that you can use with these will foldables. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, you'll get quite a bit of those. Like I said, activities, you'll get the assessments, the homework, and the notebook. Again, the notebook comes as a PDF. I just went and printed this so I have these booklets. If you are interested in purchasing my 7th grade bundle, please um, go ahead and look down below. I will include a link so that you can read up more information or go ahead and purchase the bundle. Thank you so much for watching my video and if you have questions, please let me know. Mathanddemand at Hotmail.com. Thank you. Bye.